Show me growling, sound like a dog. About your mouth, say what up, dog. Hanging tough, low. Help me out, had enough, no. Can't be brushed off, won't it now? Giving up, phone, lift me up, go. Don't let me down. Start me growling. How y'all doing? It's your boy Explain. Heard something interesting the other night. And it sent me on a whole little mental thing, so. You know how I do. We're gonna check that shit out. <laughs> Hope everybody doing well, taking care of themselves. Fair use act. Because I'm be reviewing other people's work on the process of finding out what I'm trying to know. And put all these puzzle pieces together. Um, you could say this a personal thing. But it's actually, like, bigger than me. So I'm just... You'll see what I'm doing. And the title will give it away, too. So, greetings, salutations, all that good stuff that you're supposed to say when you first meeting people in the introductions. Now, I'll do respect to all cultures. Let's move. And I zoomed into the article. Part of the page here says, Our people, where they came from originally, the source of the population of Louisiana, all right? Louisiana, along with the Spaniards, also came quite a number of gypsies who established themselves in the western portion of the state, not far from Natchitoches, a race so dark and swarthy. All right, gypsies, a race so dark and swarthy that in the eyes of the Negroes, they were always regarded as some strange free Negro race. Gypsies, Negroes, very... All right. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to be a lot of clicking today. <clears throat> yeah, I'm from Slidell, Louisiana, right outside of New Orleans. You pretty much could say I live in the greater New Orleans area. We used to have the same area code and all that stuff, but now it's switched up. But what got me is the description. Let's see how I can find it. That should be right. All right. Like my second, third cousin is like Chief Warhorse. If any of y'all into the Native American studies, Black Native, so on and so forth. Chief Warhorse and my grandmother, close cousins. Um, so been hearing Choctaw this, Choctaw that my whole life. I actually just moved off of Bayou Lacombe to the point I live on the Poncha train now. And if you know where I'm at, you know where I'm at. But it's not show the peoples. Show the peoples because we got a that distinct look. Nigga, I'm on the map. <laughs> you Google that and I'm right there. That's funny. <laughs> I'm famous. I'm just bullshitting. Come on, man. Look for the peoples. Look for the people. I do not want to go on a personal page. She actually do kind of got the cheekbones. All right. We're going to get it together. We're going to get it together. See how they all look Creole? Kind of got that black gene. Man, I'm trying to find a specific group of people without going into my bloodline. <laughs> but that's a good example. And man, if she don't look like my grandma. But um, she really do look like my grandma. You see this, even though you can see Asiatic features and this, that, and the other, whatever, you also see a lot of the high cheekbones prominent in the black Choctaw around here. Separate from the other Choctaw. Strange black race, gypsies. Could have been considered Egyptians, right? I'm going to look up straight Chief Warhorse. <laughs> Come on now, quit playing with me now. You act like a whole bitch. There she go, Chief Warhorse. Thought I heard something in the background. See the cheekbones? See the unique dark skin? And 
I didn't get the silky hair, but a lot of my cousins do got the silky hair or whatever. Just a dis, you know, just a unique silkiness. Everybody always say they got Indian in their family or whatever, but what are they really talking about? That's the look. See him? That is a very distinct down here male look. In my mind, every time I see that look, that's the black chalk tall look. The cheekbones, the elongated bottom half of the face, and I guess we got beady eyes. I don't know what to call it, but um, that Indian picture I just showed y'all, same picture. Well, if you rewind, you saw, you'll see the last picture I just showed, and it's the same Indians. Or the same distinct look in the cheekbones and eye area. How to show me a bunch of people fishing? Why you gotta be acting fun? Man, I'm in there twice. I'm somebody. <laughs> oh well, I can't find that first. Let me try one more time. Shut up. No, I ain't gonna show it to me. But y'all saw the first picture. It was the older one, and I was pointing out the cheekbones, even though they looked very Asiatic. Um, one more thing. One more thing. Oh, for you youngsters out there, it's the same look. He's just his own individual branch, naturally. The elongated, beady eyes, the cheekbones sitting right there. It's it's the look down here. I ain't got it. And if I do, it's, it's mudded with my dad's features. Um, <laughs> back to it. But is that, that's pre-dynastic Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, mm -mm. Culture in Egypt. Mm -mm. Wrong one. We're going to get to that. Pretty dark, all right? These linger near natural toshas as late as 1840, but have since disappeared. Where did they all go? Just like the Mayas disappeared, right? Just like this tribe disappeared, you didn't disappear. Again, gypsies were, yeah, Negro. They were very dark. Who are the real gypsies? Egyptian. They can't even understand how a Hindu made it all the way to Europe. Uh, I guess I could look, up, look all this crap up since I ain't doing shit. And I hear my dog barking. Come on, already have me log in. I was guessing my ass off. I'm surprised that's the password. Yes, say that shit. All right. That's my dad's mom. But, um, where am I going? Where is DNA? Story. See, they keep updating the ethnicity. That's the main reason I came over here because I, they didn't update it from what I'm trying to tell you. But we know they updated it. Cool. All right, you see, I'm Nigerian, Benetongo, uh, West England, Scotland, Cameroon, Mali. Now, when I first did this test, like maybe, could be like eight to ten years ago, Mali was on top. Then Nigeria, then Scotland, Ireland. But somehow it rearranged itself, this, that, and the other. Indigenous, Native American, 2%. A uh, point with DNA strands, DNA strands go from being like, let's say you're just all black, but then you mix with the Chinese. The Chinese ain't going to be the big portion. It's going to get attached on. But as you go, more and more things get attached onto that strand, making the original port part smaller in some cases. So even the small things that could be considered noise actually might be trace root regions. So that's interesting as well. 
But what they have taken off is I had, not Northern, I had Southern India. No, I did not have Southern India. Where the Ganges at? I had somewhere around there. Wherever the Ganges River is. That's where my blood was no more than something, something years ago. But they keep updating shit. So how she, how he just went through, how did the Hindus get over here? Oh, another conversation. There's no migration path for history. They, they, they don't understand. And gypsies were, yeah, Negro. They were very dark. Who are the real gypsies? Egyptian. They can't even understand how a Hindu made it all the way to Europe when there is no migration path for history. They, they, they don't understand because they were coming from the real Egypt, America, Egyptian, Egyptians. All right. Gypsy, nomadic free spirit person, a member of a people originating in South Asia and tradi or original the Orient, Oriental in South Asia and traditionally having an whatever way of life living widely dispersed across Europe North da, 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 Romani that's not the original term <laughs> it used to be straight like oh yeah somebody from Egypt from Egypt and it moved that's what it used to be but now it's all this and you can see the politics in it when you do shit like this oh Nakedish is somewhere around here Nakatoshis it's Nakedish Now see, it just comes up no name. Her name was No Name Gypsy. Yeah, I done broke it up into that many sections and I ain't clicking that. They might even took that out. But here in her career, you can find her as no, no Name Gypsy. And somewhere around here, all of a sudden, the Romani collectively decided that they were offended by that. And she had to change her name. The Romani, Rome, didn't Julius Caesar go into Egypt? Would you be the original Egyptian if you kicked out later during the Byzantine Empire? Would you have a problem with somebody calling themselves the Egyptian? that don't look like you that might fuck up your backstory. I don't know the answers to any of these things. Don't be feeling offended. I got the same emotions about, um, who was it? Well, I got the same feelings about another uh, migration story, but ain't no need in getting into that. Oh, it's the same story. Asian, Orientals, migration says that the Asians weren't originally oriented where they are but black buddha black samurai black just a lot of black stories we did that yes on the other video let's keep rolling they were very dark and swarthy so they're still there they didn't disappear although their former settlement can still be traced in the liquid black eyes the dark complexion the somewhat idle habits Did it say liquid black? Okay. No. Regarded as some strange race. He already read that. Liquid black eyes. My eyes is black as shit. Um, <laughs> let's go back to the war horse picture. We already started having too much shit. this
part I've seen in my fight, and, and I'm the chief of the tribe, is when you come up against people of color as well as European descent, and you say Indians, they are looking for the Bill Cody, um, Long Ranger Tonto style thing. Just a little lesson if you don't know. I am not getting distracted. We still on the same route. Bill Cody is Buffalo Bill. What's that name? Iron Eyes Cody. It's still Bill Cody. Um, yeah, Bill Cody is Italian as fuck. But that's the Ital that's the crying Indian from the eighties, and that's the Native American in Indian that became stereolist stereotypically popularized through pop culture and now when you look for an indian if you ain't somewhere in this category of thought you must be lying but this fool italian is shit <laughs> bill cody i want to lose the war horse though i don't want to lose there we go because she's gonna say one little piece that i need Cities don't know about us because when they did write the truth about us it was covered in the basement mm -hmm. so it's still down in the basement my people made those bricks okay right the here. bricks right that here. cathedral right here. um the truth was in the cabildo mm -hmm. where is it a lot of the truth is inside the tombs of the graves that's at st louis mm -hmm. cathedral because they have a lot of indians buried in there too the bricks that built st louis cathedral my people made those bricks mm -hmm. The bricks that built the tomb in the older graves came from my people. Those categories was not only able to blow debris, but it was also able to cover things up. Like Katrina blew a lot of rubbish that covered, still hitting around. A lot of the universities don't know about us because when they did write the truth about us, it was covered in the basement. So it's still down in the basement, okay? A lot of the truth was in the St. Louis Cathedral. Dang, I, I ain't got time. If you watch the whole thing, she's going to tell you the Romans built St. Louis Cathedral. And it's like, wait a minute. You talking some pre-Columbus junk so you know some stuff through your passed down oral history, if you learn her background story. Our background story. Uh, nope. It was just right there. I know y'all saw it. St. Louis Cathedral. Bam. Disney World and New Orleans. They got all kind of crazy stories and then it burnt down more than once. So ain't no real telling on the history of it. Let's keep rolling. Of their descendants. So dark and swarthy, all right? That's a primary source from the 1800s, letting us know the gypsies in Louisiana, that even the so-called Negroes, they were saying that they were even darker than them. So we're going to continue with the video. I just wanted to start it out with uh, that reference. I'm going to get into some more books and articles. Just want to uh, let you guys know that, you know, we're going to get into it in other videos, but there is all types of uh, different types of gypsies, not just one. A lot of people were being tagged uh, gypsies based on what they were doing and also just from traveling. We're going to read that today a little bit. But I just want you guys to know we're going to be talking about mainly some of the Eastern, as they call Eastern gypsies of Europe. Uh, a lot of the Scottish, Irish, English uh, gypsies we're going to read about. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's get some more references. So this book is called Ancient and Modern Britons, a retrospect. This is from volume one. Uh, continuing, it says, in addition to the black or brown and yellow races already spoken of as prehistoric Europeans, there is a theory that a copper-colored race, closely akin to some branches of American Indians, once inhabited Europe, or rather the southern parts of Europe, and North Africa, and North Africa, who American Indians copper-colored. Proofs of this are said to be visible in the complexion of the modern cops, which is reddish, and of the Nubians who are described as a deep red color with nothing of the Negro in their profile and with oval faces. This theory has been started by an Italian archeologist named Gennarelli and may be seen at length in the journal of the- 
Got like three more minutes of this video and then I got to switch gears, but we still on it. The Anthropological Institute. You can go read it more thoroughly there. There are whole investigations why they're saying that. It's leading points are thus summarized. All right. So again, they're saying maybe, well, maybe they're not really from, maybe they're more from the American Indians, this couple colored people. The red races of Europe and America generally adduces A, the existence of pyramids in Egypt, America, and Etruria. B, of labyrinths in Egypt, America, and Etruria. Of the titled children of the sun, born both by the Incas and the pharaohs. Of mummies in Egypt and America, and images of mummies in Etruria. Of hieroglyphic languages in Egypt and America. Well, you know, that's a Nahuatl word between waters or close to waters or a place among waters. It's really what it means. Just like, you know, um, what was the other word? Uh, Mesopotamia between two rivers or between two waters. Same thing. All right. So ATL again is an American word. So when they're. Uh, so they're saying uh, things that start with the alt ATL at land. That's kind of rooted to a lot of stuff over here. Just a little break. A lot of people be trying to pinpoint knowledge to certain areas or whatever. Like I kind of don't b believe in the titles they attach to it. Like in a sense, like there's another guy I be watching and he be doing some Egyptian stuff and he uses the Egyptian man for some of the transcribing of the hieroglyphics. And every time the Egyptian man sees anything similar to the science used that the pyramids use, like if he goes to Gobeki Tepe or he goes to the Mayan places, that and the other, he say, I believe this too was Egypt. And it's like, wait, you like in America looking at Aztec and Mayan shit. Yep, they're Egyptian. Like, uh, maybe there was a science and technology and understanding that was widespread. There's another couple of videos and they'll be like, oh, everything was Tartaria. Uh, maybe these are the names of places all connect. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't believe it's that solid. You know, they got some gray area. It don't be black and white all the time. But this is the part I'm looking for. Greeks are saying Atlantis. That's not their word. Where do they get the ATL from? But it is held by some writers, as stated a page or two back, that the title Scott was given in contempt by the enemies of this people and that it signifies cruelty, vagabond. While there is no proof of the 15th century witness of the first advent of the gypsies in Scotland, farther the wild black Irishman of Queen Elizabeth's reign, with his plated hair, with his plated hair, his swarthy skin, and his fen land hunts was virtually a gypsy and his island was the mother country of the scots all right how y'all doing i'm author scott <laughs> yeah so um i'm from a long line of scots and the name of author is passed down from great grandparents etc um the origins of my family is pretty mysterious or whatever we just come walking out of texas led by my great 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 grandmother lucinda and her young son george scott supposedly they have these names when they leave but the scott plantations that you hear about are more over here not in texas that i see where are they coming from they're leaving from i know they had to cross the sabine river a lot of people did my grandfather my father's father tell stories that oh yeah in the early days the the blacks who crossed the sapine river they made a split a lot of us came over here and stayed in the woodworks the rest went to new orleans a lot of the prettier women went to new orleans and worked in the hoe houses and that's how we got the light-skinned this that and the other and a lot of that light-skinned dark-skinned stuff you'd see or whatever some of it was based on the fact that hey you're light-skinned your mama was a hoe don't think I'm saying that disrespectfully, even though it's a disrespectful phrase. My mom is yellow as hell from a long line of yellow women. <laughs> so I don't know the true story. But, you know, that's a whole nother last name from my father's side. I'm a Scott. More seems to be a collective term. European wise picked is a collective collective term. Tossed around, if you will, black Amores and regular Moors. 
gypsy we just saw as a traveler, but also in its ancient root, if you go into the etymology, you may see that gypsy relates to someone from Egypt. So the process of seeing that, Scots, I know from my personal study that Scotia is where Scotland gets its name from, Queen Scotia. Did I already click on this and have this open in the window already? Yep, so I got an extra window. Let me see. Bam, get rid of you. Two pages are the same. Bam, get rid of you. All right, Queen Scotia. Black Irish people, black gypsies in America, whole circle we're making. And you can find multiple videos where it says the blacks with Irish last names on this coast, not all of them were owned by Irish slave owners. Who heard of an Irish slave owner? You hear of Irish slaves, South America, but you don't hear about Irish slave owners. They actually were the dignified blacks from Ireland. And during the Braveheart days, that was more of a black and white war than a red face, blue face war. And we need to get rid of the blacks so we can have this land. That that's the theory. Queen's coach, and we talk about black Egyptians in America. So anyway, <clears throat> the history of the human race is very closely related to the move. I just want to hear her story. I found it a lot easier. There's a Wikipedia somewhere. You trying to go into the whole thing, thing. Queen Scotia. I found it way easier yesterday. I ain't had to read all that shit. Egyptus. Yep, okay. I think it's this one. Can't be. I ain't read all that shit. Okay, that's what I read. Bam. <clears throat> Skoda or Scotia are the names given to the mythological, mythological daughters of two different Egyptian pharaohs in Irish mythology, Scottish mythology, and pseudo history. History not approved by mainstream academia, which necessarily don't make it wrong. Though legends vary, all agree that Scotia was the ancestor of the Gaels. Gaul, well, I don't think that's the Gauls. I think that's the Gaels, and that's just something different. Who traced their ancestry to Irish invaders called Scoti, who settled da 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 da, -da Caledonia? Get to the Egyptian myth lore, man. Yeah, I gotta find the shit I found. Later sources. Grave, no. Okay, this part. Right. <clears throat> the Lebar states that Scotia was the mother. Okay, it states that Scotia was, that's probably some European mythology book type shit states that Scotia was the mother of Galethilos Gales the Gales come from him creator of the Gaelic language yeah okay so that's where Gales come from the eponymous eponymous say that for me ancestor of the Gales the mother was the daughter of an Egyptian pharaoh named Singus. Okay, so we definitely got to look him up. Copy. New window. This process I went through the other day, so sorry. Still recording? Definitely. Wow. Okay, I'm going right back to Scotia. Wow. All right. This is the name found only in Irish legend. Okay, so that Google is not going to help. Oh, lady on. She married Gull's father, 
No, let me see. All right, I had to say what's up to the old lady. <laughs> Back at it. All right. <clears throat> Scotia is the mother of this guy who is the, you know, they get they, they get the name Gales from him. But the part that's interesting, excuse me, the daughter of a pharaoh named Singus, name you only can find in they myth lore, she married this guy, father, no, this guy, Gales' father, Godel, Godel, Goydel, Goyum, Goydel's father, no, son of Phineas Farset, legendary king of Scythia, who appears in different versions of Irish mythology. He was the son of Boath, the son of Magog. Other sources, other sources describe his lineage from the line of Gomer. Boath is in Egypt. Well, I mean, it says so right here, but you can find it in other sources like, you know, Skrupska, Skrupska, the Bible. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's the connection right there. Gomer. And I'm trying to connect it to one more thing. While the Bible ends its record of kings and daughters in Jeremiah. That's where the Irish pick it up. Okay, that's all that says. <clears throat> One thing. Jasher. Did that come up yet? This is in list of what I want to bring up, but I'm not sure if it came up yet. We just left the swarthy Egyptians. Okay, anyway. I was trying to make the Irish Egypt connection and make it make sense to me or whatever. So I just gave you those pieces with the Gomer. Now, in the book of Jasher, <clears throat> they talk about a period that you could find actually historically or whatever. And that's why there's a lot of conflict, because at a certain period, Egypt didn't have pharaohs. They had kings. And if you read the book of Jasher, they get to the point where they bring up this guy and this guy is kicked out of where the hell is he kicked out of i feel like i looked that up i looked up a few things why i had the camera off wait 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 anyway when you look this guy up or whatever he was oh shoot i did look it up it's right here <laughs> uh, one second i'm sorry yeah might be it he was exiled there's a part where they say he's exiled from either way he's exiled from Scythia at some point right too many tabs I knew this was gonna happen right there nope yeah right there Now, when you look into all that Scotia junk like that, her son was a wise man. He invented the alphabet that became the Gaelic language. Smart guy. Um, <clears throat> in, the day, in those days, this is the book of Jasher, early Abraham junk. In those days, there was the land of Shinar, a wise man who had understanding and all wisdom and of a beautiful appearance, but he was poor and indignant. His name was... Rick, Rickion. Okay. I feel like I've heard that somewhere else now. Don't they make headphones? Anyway. And he was hard set in supporting himself. Long story short. Long story short. He comes up with a scheme because he doesn't really have a trade. He's a wise man. He's been spending his whole life pretty much in study. 
when he gets to Egypt, he finds, I believe, three strong men take them for hire with a little bit of inheritance he has has from when he left the land before. He pays these three men to go up on this certain hill, which I believe in. <laughs> Wait. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to that later. Show the hill, show the hill, show the hill, show the hill. Anyway, there's a certain hill where they bury their dead. You can find that all on this link under this. But anyway, there's a certain hill where they bury their dead. And when Raytheon comes along, he doesn't have a trade. So he hires the three strong men and he brings them up to that hill where the dead are buried. And he decides that he's going to start taxing people. You can't bury your dead unless you pay us. The Pharaoh doesn't know about this. He's busy with other orders, this, that, and the other. But when he figures it out or whatever, he wants to see that man. You know, he's not even a Pharaoh yet. He's a king. The king of Egypt wants to see this man. He, he rises up or whatever, and he comes up with a scheme. And he's like, you know, I'm just going to present the Pharaoh with all these gifts, this, that, and the other, and sweet talk him. It works. Long story short, the Pharaoh's like, man, I give you your props because I tax the living. Only you were wise enough to tax the dead. From now on, they remixed his name. And you even see right about. Let's go to your screen. Pharaoh. Uh, there's another one somewhere. Anyway, there's a long word that they relate the word Pharaoh to. And I can't remember what it is. But um, they get the first, they name, they get the word Pharaoh from Raytheon's name or whatever they call Raytheon in their land, land. That's the first Pharaoh. And everybody after Raytheon and them are referred, oh, did I just exit that out? Shite. Uh, are referred to as Pharaohs. Raytheon, I really do believe is Scotia's son. The Gale guy, this guy. I believe this is Raytheon. That's her husband. Never mind. Where's the son? You better not point it out for me. The Irish legends mission Scotia as an Egyptian princess who grew up in her kingdom at the time of the prophet Moses. Over time, she met a Greek prince named this guy. Who was in exile by his father. Who went to the Egyptian court. Who is this guy's father? Oh, they just told you who his father was. Sorry, I gotta figure this out in y'all face, but that's a good study, right? That's how everybody learns. That's his father. That's the guy and his, that's the husband. She married this guy, but this guy's father, nope, nope, fucked it up. That's the Pharaoh. Pharaoh's daughter marries this guy. He's the father of this guy. Oh, that's one name, anyway. This guy, this guy, all oh, these names, biblically named, but he's the descendant of Gomer. So there you go. Now we can go to this. It wasn't um, coherent enough to really um, support the idea that they might have made excursions as far away as Scotland um, and were, you know, exerting influences that far away at 3200 B.C. But maybe, sorry, I was going to say maybe no, the, maybe the other way around, though, Laird. Right. Well, my my first perspective was that I know that the Dogon tribe, the African tribe from Mali that I've studied, um, indications are that at in the in the era of 3200 BC they were Egyptian, and they've done a very good job of preserving traditions. And I thought that if I had a shot of understanding um, Scarabray that it would be through comparison to the Dogen. If there had been Egyptian influences, I might see it in the Dogen. Mm. And so I didn't have great hopes when I started researching that I would find any connection whatsoever. That wasn't really my expectation. Mm -hmm. um, but um, as I got, got into looking at the situation, I realized there's not very much evidence to even begin with um, 
at Scarborough. That it, it's fairly limited, but it doesn't connect to anything locally. I mean, the language and the the pottery and the architecture and so on doesn't really connect to um, Scandinavian or or local uh, roots around the region of of Scotland. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You have place names that that don't have linguistic roots, and you've got um, artifacts that don't really connect. And so I started sorting through. Uh, to me, my first approach was to look at architectural forms. I know that the Scarabray village um, looked at in overview um, is comparable to a Dogan village. I mean, it's, it's theoretically possible they could have fallen in the same ballpark of, of um, architectural design. Um, similar style of, of construction using um, drywall stone construction, mm-hmm. um, the placement of buildings in relationship to pathways, inner pathways, and so forth like that. Um, it's it's reasonable to think that they might have come out of the same tradition. Sure. But um, there was another structure at Scarabray, which is, is sort of a rounded um, stone structure with a, a doorway built in a particular way. And I know that every Dogan village, um, part of the way they maintained their peaceful na- atmosphere was... Um, through the use of something called a discussion house that was built structurally very similar. Mm. Uh, the way that the discussion house works is that in Dogen society, anytime there's a dispute, the people who are parties to the dispute are required to go to the discussion house and can't leave until they've resolved it. Wow. Uh, Let me jump in there, Larry. So you're in an investigation mode at this point. You, you got suckered into this research and you realize, okay, I've nothing apparent here like, you know, a, a, like a writing system or a hieroglyphs or any of that, you know, that you could kind of tangible. But when you look at the complexity of the of the culture and their living habitats and and everything, you realise that there is something there in terms of research, in terms of conceptual. Is that correct? Right. And the the but I needed a positive link, and mm-hmm. the positive link came out of the plan of the Scar, original Scarberry houses. Um, the stone houses that are there, I think there's only one left that wasn't rebuilt over the top of at a later point. But gotcha. it's understood that all of the original houses were built to the same plan, and mm-hmm. it happens to be a match for a Dogen plan for a stone house. But the 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 part that was valuable to me was that the Dogen plan connects to cosmology. There's a, there's a reason it's built to that plan. The... Um, structure wow. of the of the house consists of, includes a, a round room at the the at one end sort of a square main room with two rectangular rooms either side of that and an mm-hmm. entryway at the far end away from the round room uh, for the dogan that represents the body of a woman actually um, if you dig deeply enough into the cosmology it's meant to be the body of a sleeping goddess and um, the round room is her head. The square room is her main body cavity. The rooms to either side are her arms. And the entryway at the bottom represents her sexual parts. Wow. At Scarabray, you also have a central hearth that represents the heart. And I thought it was very interesting that um, from my perspective, if we're looking at the Egyptian influences on Scotland, that they had added this hearth in Scotland in keeping with the cosmological definition of the house. Um, I thought that was very interesting because the Dogen don't have the hearth. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't until later on that it occurred to me that I might be looking at things backwards, that the Scarabray house might be the original and the Dogen house the the duplicate. How and the beautiful. Dogen, Dogen, Dogen removed the hearth because in Mali they didn't need a hearth in a house. Makes sense, you know. And, and oh, Wow, so I guess you're on this train then of research and, and it's kind of coming to you. It's not just a... A simple thing. It's it's just levels of complexity that are kind of mirroring each other. Um, yes, that that's true. And the more cultures that I've compared, the easier it is to try to sort out uh, one I haven't haven't seen before. So now having the link of the architecture, um, suggesting a link to a particular system of cosmology, I'm now in a position to interpret the megalithic sites that are on Orkney Island in terms of that same cosmology. Um, that uh, we have uh, a series of sites that essentially form a spiral around a body of water. Mm. Uh, they, were, they were connected by a road in Neolithic times that led to Scarabray. And those sites fall right in line with the cosmological definitions of the Dogen. These represent progressive stages of creation in a 
in an understandable way. I mean, we can des- describe how language um, uh, defines what these sites represented. Uh, the shapes represent a particular thing, and in sequence with each other, they uh, you have a strong argument that we're talking about a cosmological progression. Wow, this is amazing, Laird. Okay, so maybe just stop for a moment. Let's uh, let let's break this down for the listeners because Neolithic and Megalithic. I have trouble just explaining this to people who are aware of this stuff. Uh, you know, Neolithic, the New Stone Age, is basically the era, and the Megalithic is typically the constructions like the stone circles and the mounds. However, that's right. It, however, so we call Nascara Bray a Neolithic settlement because it was that era that it was found. But most likely, we can make the conclusion that the people who built the megaliths lived at Scara Bray. Would that be correct? Yes, it was the same society of people, whether it was the actual um, who they, they believe are were farmers living at Scarabray who raised these monuments, or whether it was a larger group in the region who raised the monuments is, you know, no one can really answer. But yes, it was the same culture that, that put up the megalithic sites over a period of, of 600 years. Uh, these namesakes are get very confusing for people. I mean, you say the word megalithic to people, even in Britain and in Ireland, they just, most of the people don't know it. They just get confused and it's megalithic, neolithic and Really, megalithic could be anything big stone, but we're talking about the megalithic culture of Europe here, uh, which really did span from North Scotland right down to Malta, from the northwest of Ireland right to the Middle East. So we're not, you know, you must look at this as a whole. This is what I try to do. This is my, this is my thing. I'm trying to raise awareness and attention to this layer that we're not just talking, you know, a few things in because Brit- Britain and Ireland's famous for the Stonehenge and the Newgrange and Maze Howe and you know d- d- we have famous monuments here, but uh, nobody looks at this as a unified megalithic culture of Europe who had all the same knowledge. So it's like we're spreading out now from Orkneys to British Isles and uh, and down to like the bottom of Europe. That's right, and um, and in a coherent way with forms that that we can relate to one another and that we can use um, other mm. uh, bring other evidence to bear to tie them together. So we're not too far away from Egypt, Laird, with the megalithic <laughs> Europe. When you when you when you migrate the coastlines down, when you migrate those coastlines, I mean, from the Orkneys, it's not it's not a, an abstract idea. It's quite tangible. No, it is. It's very tangible, and there there are references um, um, that Egyptian references that make it sound like there were connections between um, the locales in later eras. In, in ancient Greece, certainly there were. Wow. Um, Herodotus reports uh, stories of of sailors who sailed out through the mouth of the pillars of Hercule, Hercules mm-hmm. um, and northward from there. Sounds like they made it to the Orkney Island region. Really? Um, so it's not not unthinkable that these things happened. We also know that the Egyptians had sea going vessels that were quite capable of making that kind of a journey. This is amazing. Um, so. Well, it makes sense to me, you know, and, and bringing in a seafaring aspect, and I, I think this is pertinent because I mean we're talking the Orkney Islands. I mean, they're, they're just within the Orkneys themselves. They're a large collection of small inland uh, waterways and islands. Um, they must have been seafarers getting to and from little islands there, and then to the mainland of Scotland as well. Um, I mean, these guys had to have done this all by boat. They're they're, they're boat they're boat people, if you want to call them that. They must be a boat. Uh, there must be a boat culture or a seafaring culture. Right, although it's not clear in ancient times um, what happened with those waterways, what kind of land connections there might have been to Europe Mm -hmm. um, and so forth. So there may have been connections, earlier connections that were not by boat. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Personal note. note. Uh, Don't lose it that fast. It starts with H. Bam, hoy. Man, we were just having a conversation in my family chat. Uh, go back. Yes, I'm Scotland, 13%. Arthur Scott Jr. Which is bam right there. Now let's go to trees. Arthur Scott family tree. Mr. Hoy Scott. My grandfather. We was making jokes on what the hell is a hoy? Where does hoy come from? Don't nobody know nothing about that name. Mr. Hoy Scott. 
Boy of Scotland. I'm going to read this shit later. Yeah, I'm going to find out how I got his name and everything. But, um... Dang, do I got to lose that to get that? Yeah, I'm going to come back to that. Uh, oh. Orkney. Why? Orkney. Excuse me, sneezing. That's not good that I'll in like that. There we go. Orkney Islands. All right. Back at it. No. Um, there uh, are estimates of up to maybe 20 families that might have lived there at any given time. We know they were farming there. Um, we can see that they had some um, fishing skills and things, but didn't seem to make a living, did not support themselves through through fishing. Uh, they were... Um, de 59 degrees here. This is like not the habitat you want to be doing this stuff, but do we have any reasons why we're seeing such a, an important uh, culture. I mean, they they call this like uh, one of the most awesome preserved sites in the whole of Europe uh, for research for archaeology. Um, it was such a rich culture there and complex. Uh, we just don't expect to find it up so it's just a cold terrain. Do we, do we know anything? Was the climate maybe different, or had these guys yeah. a reason for being there? I, I expect that the climate was warmer at that time. I mean, it, for it to have. Uh, fostered agriculture in I was waiting for a feast they have to talk about and then I'm done making my little circle in that region and uh, for centuries to have easy ag agriculture happening there the climate must have been somewhat warmer than it is today yeah I know you're going to be going there in August Larry and <laughs> Tanya it's not a pretty picture there even in the summertime it can be pretty perhaps by farmers who knew they were leaving permanently and didn't want to leave farm animals behind to just starve to death um, they can see that at least a thousand people attended this feast. But when the feast was finished, again, they deliberately covered over the site, but before they covered it, they left bones um, set carefully all around the site of the feast. But not wow. just any bones, not just any bones, they left only shin bones of animals. Really? Now, now now, that symbolism works in some of these ancient cultures is through homonyms, the use of homonyms. Um, and the farther back in time you go, the more commonality of language you have. One of the things I've had success doing for the Orkney Island region is comparing um, native words there. The only reason I stopped on that page right here. Um, <clears throat> fishing. And... On one of the pages that I have the backspace for, it says they were farming and chilling or whatever. And then they just got to leave all of a sudden. Mm, don't want to lose nothing. It's a whole nother video I need to leave. Let me see. Gypsies in Louisiana, New Orleans specifically. Scots, dark people from Ireland and Scotland. Continuing. Wait, 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 wait. Come on, there's a little short one. I ain't trying to do nothing long. Trying to do nothing long, baby. I think that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Continue. Dogan words. And uh, in the book that I've written, uh, there's all, all sorts of correlations between words back and forth to explain why a site was named what it was. So using the Egyptian dictionary, we can see that the word for the shin bone of an animal mm -hmm. is a homonym for a word that means to leave under duress, to leave under uh, dire circumstances. They wow. had to leave is what they were saying. Wow. They, they also um, a deer deer carcass over the top of the site before they covered it, and the head of a, a bull on top of that. Now, um, Egyptian words that tie to the the deer and the bull the uh, the bullhead or the cow's head um, also tell us some things about the site. Um, 
it looks as if the site was deliberately covered over, but the Egyptian word that applies is written with a series of glyphs that sort of act out um, the daily ritual that happens in Judaism when they cover and tie a scroll after it's been read, and that's a ritual act. Um, the the spiral of structures that lead to Scarab Ray create a, a cosmological form that's known as an arc. Now, when um, in Judaism every day when they have finished reading the Torah scroll and they they roll it up and they cover it and tie it and place it back in a cabinet, the cabinet is called the Aron HaKodesh. All right, from what I gathered so far. <clears throat> Come on, I just had this bad boy in the file. Dogon. 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 We just had the Dogon. I don't need two of you. Dogon went. See how they be doing me? I can't type. Anyway. <clears throat> All right. So the Dogon, they in Egypt. Somehow they make in contact with the Irish people, and they have to leave in duress. But they leave a marker, which is their language relation. This is famine time, guessing. And phonetically, they abbreviate that to ARC. So mm. by covering it, they've so essentially named it for us. There's an Egyptian word that means to cover over that's pronounced ARC. Um, there's the symbolism of um, the word for cover over that, that shows us the steps associated with an ark, they're telling us symbolically that this the site was an ark. Um, we have similar things happening at Gobekli Tepe. At Gobekli Tepe, the claim is, one of the claims is, they covered it over to protect the site from, from natural events. But mm -hmm. at, on Orkney Island, we don't have that consideration. It, it doesn't look like the sites themselves were in danger. Ceremonial, also, ceremonial uh, ritual uh, protection of the site. Right, and, and the um, the things that were covered were not the large megalithic structures. So clearly, they weren't trying to protect those for for posterity or for um, for any other reason, protected from natural um, circumstances or whatever. This was um, a ritual act, and from a ritual standpoint, what it says to me is, if you if you compare it in parallel to what happens with a Torah scroll in Judaism. What it says is that the instructional uh, purpose of this site, just like the, the instructional purpose of reading a portion of a Torah scroll, was completed properly and that they had deliberately closed it up and tied it up and put it away as a ritual act, indicating that the, the, the instruction was brought to its proper conclusion the way they intended it. So pretty much it means message received when you bury the, the junk or whatever. So I ain't got to click on everything to say it. So I'm just going to go here. I believe the Egypt empire was way bigger. They show you were gomers there. Gomers there in the time of Moses. Moses isn't too long after Joseph. If gomers are already there, they're already doing connections with Scotland before Scotia. It's not even called Scotia yet. But anyway, if I keep hitting play, it's going to tell you that how this is set up is one in the middle with 12 around it or something like that. And they're going to mention the significance of it um, megalithically. But they don't bring up the fact that 
Joseph had a dream, a dream that his stock of wheat was staying amongst the other 12 higher. And, you know, symbolism. They tell us what the dream means in one, one, one way, but it has multiple meanings. And maybe Pharaoh wasn't getting the only famine message because didn't they end up suffering from the family famine too, the brothers of Joseph? So you got the 12 with the one. You got the 12 with the one. The Dogon originally were in Egypt. They also mention a lot of fish people, which means they know their way around a boat. Because if you know the Dogon history, they also came to America to make... the Omec heads and to bring the rubber for the rubber games games that the Aztecs and Mayans played because they were known as the Omex, the rubber people. The Omex. There's a rumor or a certain mythology or whatever where they say that black pygmies, which he actually gonna get to if you keep listening, but we ain't gonna take all day doing this. If you keep listening, he'll talk about the little people who built the fairy lands and the fairy structures. And I actually got to look that up. Scottish. Okay. Let's see, images and see what happens. Okay, I don't know if that's real. But um, he was saying there's like underground tunnels and this, that, and the other in certain particular areas in Scotland that are attributed to the fairy folk. Fairy folk having relation to leprechaun. Leprechaun, little green man. Green, mm, they say it's mythology to relate to black without saying black. Also, since people like to make negative, po positive, I mean, make things more negative, orcs. Orkney Islands. Island of the Orcs. Islands of the little black people. They is little black people. The hell? Read all that crap later. Scotia comes in a generation later. Um, making, I'm, I just want to say, since it's the Moses times, I feel like there's some significance that happened back and forth between them building this as a signifier that, yeah, we got the mes message, famine about to come, we're going to be eating potatoes. Like a <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to put it all together. But the Scott part, Black Scottish, all that good stuff. Feel like I'm leaving something out, but it's just a weird little connection. You wouldn't, I don't know how many of y'all got Irish last names, Scottish last names. Are they slave owner last names? I don't know. A lot of history say they might not be. And just to make the whole circle, there's enough evidence that Joseph came to America because famine stuff, people spread around a little bit. You gotta get, that's a whole nother study. It's not even the biggest point. It's just part of the circle. Scotland, Louisiana, Aztecs and Mayans through the Omex, Mali, Timbuktu, Egypt. All intertwined and connected. And my last name is Scott. I'm out of y'all later. So they growling, sound like the toe About your mouth, say what up, dog Can't get tough, low Help me out, had enough, no Can't be brushed off, want it now Giving up, phone, lift me up, go Don't let me down, start me growling